This episode of All About the Gear is brought to you by Zenfolio, the number one voted website builder for photographers. With beautiful, customizable layouts and best in industry selling and marketing tools, Zenfolio is the all-in-one solution for your photography business. Use exclusive code ZENGEAR for one month free of a pro-level subscription plus 30% off the annual plan at zenfolio.com. Build it beautiful with Zenfolio. Websites, proofing, selling. Going strapless is all the rage these days, and that's what today's gear is all about. Spider Holster is a small company you may or may not have heard about here in upstate New York. They've been around the photography scene making cool camera accessories since 2009. They are probably most well known for their Spider Pro Camera Holster, a unique product that offers a comfortable and secure way to carry your camera without having to deal with a strap. Other companies like Peak Designs make similar products, but I personally have not found one as easy to use as the Spider. Their setups range from the basic holster and plate like the one that I'm reviewing today to full featured custom belts with twin holsters complete with accessory and lens cases. I first discovered them on YouTube back in 2010 with this crazy video. It was showing a photographer jumping up and down with two DSLRs strapped to the hip. It was a pretty effective marketing tool for sure because I ended up ordering mine the next day. Now I used one of these systems for about five years shooting abandoned locations and weddings. It was great having everything on my hip and ready to go. Two bodies, flashes, cameras, a spare lens. It was a great time saver not having to drop a backpack and root around for something or having to run and grab something when I needed it, always at the decisive moment of course. I ended up selling this system to a friend when I moved to the mirrorless format in 2013. Up until now, Spider Holster's focus has been on the DSLR market. Now, I'm not keen on other designs out there, and the regular Spider plates were just too bulky for the smaller mirrorless designed cameras. So I was kind of left out in the cold when I moved to mirrorless and gave up my Spider Holster setup. But now they have introduced a brand new line geared towards the mirrorless and lightweight pro camera crowd, the Spider Light Holster. The company says the Spider Light holster and plate is designed specifically for mirrorless and small DSLR cameras and that it is lightweight, durable, and extremely versatile. The perfect companion for anyone that wants an easy, draw from the hip, no strap solution to take their camera everywhere. So let's take a look at how this thing works. Okay, so here we have my trusty A7R and the very first thing we're gonna wanna do is put the mount plate onto the bottom of the camera. Now, if you've ever put a cold shoe onto a camera, you can most certainly handle this. The mount plate is fully adjustable, both laterally and back and forth, okay? So all you have to do is line this up with the bottom of your camera. Now, I wanna tell you that when you first get this, there are two screws usually in the plate, and those are set there so that your camera will butt right up against them, it's a really quick adjustment. Now I have the two screws out of there for a reason because I'm gonna show you how to use the battery grip with this and you have to remove them for that. So um, it's actually even easier than I'm going to show you right now. So all you do is get this started on the bottom. So you start the screw at the bottom. Doesn't matter really how you get it started as long as you get the threads going on it. And once the threads are, are in there and going, then you can line it up and finish it off. All right, so what you wanna do is adjust the plate so it's in the middle. Now, as I said, it's fully adjustable, so you can adjust it back and forth this way and then up and down as well. So when the screws are in it, it's gonna be adjusted just about right in the middle. You can kinda of eyeball it. Now, one thing I will say that I don't like about this plate is I wish this thumb screw was a little larger. It's very hard to torque down on, and this is like one of those plates where you really feel, because the camera's gonna be hanging from it, that you kinda wanna really turn it. So I usually stick a quarter in there and really tighten it down, that gives me a better grip, but I really wish that was just a little bit more beefy right there. I'm afraid I'm gonna break it, or it pushes into my fingers pretty hard there, so. 
All right, that's it. That's all there is to mounting the plate on the camera. You're all set to go. You can see it's nice and comfortable. Uh, I actually like it. Sits in your hand a little bit better. Kind of uh, gives you a better kind of prop position there. It doesn't get in the way of your fingers or your pinky on this side. Very nice. Very nice setup. Very comfortable. I want to mention too is that this is an Arca Swiss plate. So if you have a, a ball head with an Arca Swiss mount, this will go right on it. You don't need to do anything. You don't need a plate for it. I do not. I have a Manfrotto mount, so I have to actually mount my plate onto this one. It's no problem because there's a 20 thread right there and you can go ahead and connect it and put those both together and you're good to go. Uh, it is a little bit more bulky than I would like it. And you know, if the spider holster people are listening, and I hope they are, I really wish you guys would just make a version for Manfrotto heads. That'd be awesome uh, with this plate on it so that we can just mount that i've got a pistol grip head that i like and i use all the time and it uses these plates so um but you know it's no biggie it just mounts on there and you're good to go so uh pretty easy to do so all right let me take this off and we're going to show you the battery grip Okay, so every camera will be different. The A7R, you have to remove the battery cover in order to put the grip on. So it's very simple to do. There's a little button there, it pushes, take that off. And then what we're gonna do is this slides right in there, very simple, and we tighten it down. Now, the reason why I'm showing you this is because the battery grip is quite a bit wider than the normal camera. So it's, it's uh, quite a bit wider here on the bottom. So when you take those screws out, those stop screws, that allows you to fit this now to the wider battery grip. So I'm just going to get this started in here. This is the way I actually shoot. Uh, I like the battery grip on the camera. It gives me a longer, uh, this is my secondary shooter, so it gives me a longer battery life uh, when I'm out there shooting. So we'll, we'll get that on there. Uh, very simple again to do. And we tighten it down. Again, you're probably going to want to use a screwdriver or a quarter in there to tighten it. And that is it. It's on the bottom of the camera. And then it just slides in the lock and we'll, uh, I'll show you how that goes next. We'll demonstrate how the camera hangs from it. So, Okay, so setup with the clip is equally as simple as the actual plate is. So I'm just wearing a normal canvas belt here and you could wear a leather belt or uh, any other uh, style of belt will work just fine. And the clip has a little flip open piece right here. And all you do is just slide it on over the belt. It pops open just a little bit, like so. And that's it. Now there is a safety clip inside here that stops this from being pulled off the belt too easily. So that's a kind of a nice safety feature. So you can get it positioned where you want it. There it is on my hip. And it's just as easy as dropping your camera in, just like that. The belt clip itself features two modes. The quick draw mode, where the lock is disengaged and you draw the camera out with just one hand. It's great for controlled shooting environments. Mode two is the secure position where the lock engages every time the camera is put in the holster. To pull the camera out, you just flick the lock up, drawing the camera out to release it. This mode is specifically designed for active environments. Pretty simple, easy setup and a secure camera, no straps. I really dig it. When the company sent me this for a review, I got just the bare essentials, the clip and the plate itself. They make a host of accessories so you can customize your setup to your liking. One of the options that I really like and will be getting is the backpack adapter. I often have to hike into locations and always see things to photograph along the way. Carrying my backpack plus a camera strapped around my neck usually ends up in me having a head and neck ache. The backpack adapter allows the holster to be fitted to any backpack strap so you can hang your camera from the already supported system. You may also want to get a second plate if you often use two cameras. In the field, I will carry my main camera with a wide angle lens on it and a second camera with a 50 to 85 millimeter prime lens. I will use the wide lens for many of the landscapes or the epic wide shots on the location and then switch to the prime for the detailed shots. Normally I would go in with one camera and then come out with another so that I could cover all my bases. The problem there being I would always see things along the way and most of the time I would have the wrong camera in hand. I would have to stop, drop my backpack, switch cameras, pack back up, then shoot and move on. Next shot, wrong camera again, 
repeat. With the holster, I always have a hanging point. Quick draw the camera I want, hang the camera I don't want, no stop, drop and roll. I just take it off, shoot, and then clip it back on, I'm ready to go. I have said this before, when I'm out and trying to be creative and do my work, the last thing I want is more work getting in the way. To be creative, you have to get in the zone and you never want your equipment stopping you along that path. The spider holster has some competition out there, but for me, this is the one solution that really gives me the most options, the greatest comfort and durability. The company is taking advantage of the crowdfunding craze right now and has set up a campaign for the spider light over on Kickstarter. You can find it at kickstarter.com forward slash products forward slash spider holster forward slash spider light hyphen holster. And if that's way too much for you to follow, and I'm sure it is, you can find a link to the project right at the top of their homepage at spiderholster.com. They have already reached their goal, and all of the Spider Light box set early bird rewards are backed, but you can still get the standard box set right now for $80. They are also running great reward deals for folks that may want other accessories like I mentioned earlier in the review. That's going to do it for this edition of All About the Gear. If you have comments, ideas, or questions on products for me to review, please make them over on our YouTube channel or on the article that accompanies this review at thisweekinphoto.com. I'm your host, A.D. Wheeler, and I will see you guys next time.